physical motion was an early motivation for the development of vector calculus. As such, it makes sense for us to focus on some problems having to do with motion along curves in 3D. Here's a simple example involving determining position based on acceleration. Something very similar to what you've seen in single variable calculus. Let's say I give you the initial position of a particle, but expressed as a vector, a position vector r, at time 0, x coordinate 2, y coordinate 4, z coordinate negative 1. Then I'm going to tell you the acceleration vector as a function of time t minus cosine t, 3e e to the minus t, 6t, if I also give you the initial velocity vector, so the, the velocity v at time 0, with components negative 1, 0, and 2, then the problem is, what is the position vector as a function of time t? Now, of course, you know what to do. You integrate acceleration to get velocity. You integrate velocity to get position. But now, instead of the way you did in single variable calculus, where it was just one term, like say the x-coordinate, now we have x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and z-coordinate. So to get the velocity vector v, you integrate the acceleration vector a of t with respect to time. Plugging in what we know that acceleration vector to be, we get the integral of minus cosine t, 3e to the minus t, 6t dt. Now each of these is a simple integral. You know that the integral of minus cosine t is really minus sine t. The integral of 3e to the minus t is negative 3e to the minus t, and the integral of 6t is really 3t squared. But we have to remember the constants. The constants, multiple, not single, c1, c2, c3. We have three different constants of integration, one per component. How do we figure out what these constants are? We know the initial velocity, v, at time 0 is negative 1, 0, 2. So plug in t equals 0 and solve for c1, c2, c3. Doing so gives us, as you can check, a final answer of velocity as negative sine t minus 1, minus 3e to the minus t plus 3, and 3t squared plus 2. Now we're only halfway done because we need to get the position vector r as a function of t. But you already know what to do to get the position. We integrate the velocity vector v of t with respect to t. Plugging in what we just obtained for that velocity vector, including those constants, and integrating term by term, what do we get? The integral of minus sine t minus 1 is cosine t minus t. The integral of negative 3 e to the minus t plus 3 is positive 3 e to the minus t plus 3 t. And the integral of 3t squared plus 2 is t cubed plus 2t. Ah, once again, forgot the constants. So let's put those in. c1, c2, c3. These are, of course, different c's. Then the previous integration. How do we solve for these guys? We're going to take the initial position, r0. That is 2, 4, negative 1. We're going to set each term equal to the corresponding initial position, solve for each of these three constants. When we do so, we get that these constants are respectively plus 1, plus 1, and minus 1. That gives us our final answer for what the position is. Again, what have we done? We've taken that acceleration vector, integrated it twice, term by term, in order to get the position vector. That's one simple way that we can work with vectors as a function of time and integrate them term by term.